Man, it's pretty hot in here, isn't it? I mean, it's like, what, 20 degrees in here? It's like zero degrees outside. That's really cold. So it's pretty hot in here. That's like a 20 degree difference. That's pretty substantial. I think anybody would notice the difference immediately after walking in here, right? Uh, so I think we can all agree that that's a pretty big difference. So let's look at a smaller difference, two degrees Celsius. Is two degrees Celsius a big difference? Like, let's say it was two degrees warmer in here than it was outside. Do you think you would immediately notice the difference? Start clapping if you think that two degrees is a big change. All right, awesome. So honestly, I can't really tell how many of you are clapping. It's pretty dark. I can't really see. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that the majority of you didn't clap, which means that you think that two degrees is a relatively small difference. And I would completely agree with you at least on an individual level. If we look at this seemingly small number of two degrees Celsius, this small, harmless number, from a global standpoint, it represents the biggest problem we have ever been up against as a society. A ticking time bomb that threatens to wipe out all of humanity or even all life on Earth as we know it. Of course, I'm talking about climate change. Now, I'm sure all of you know, like, I'm sure all of you have a general idea of what climate change is. After all, it's been a pretty hot topic as of late. Uh, but when you think of climate change, you're probably thinking of, like, the orangutans, the tigers, the polar bears, like the animals, right? That's totally valid. Animals are probably the most affected by climate change. But at the end of the day, we don't really care. It's not going to inspire us to do anything. Sure, it might be incredibly sad that all these animals are going extinct, that they're dying, but it's not going to make a change. Nobody's going to really care, at least the majority of us. So we've got to look at the problem of climate change from a different perspective. Let's look, at the, let's look at it through the lens of two things that we hold very near and dear to our hearts, because by nature, we are incredibly selfish animals. So let's look at it through the lens of human lives and money. Let's get started. So before we begin, let's provide a little bit of background. Let's lay a bit of a foundation. So I'm sure, again, I'm pretty sure you all know what climate change is. But for those of you who don't, it's essentially the gradual warming of the Earth due to, cli uh, due to heat being trapped inside of the atmosphere. So normally, when heat from the sun uh, it comes down to Earth, uh, it bounces off. The majority of it just goes back out into space, right? But now that we're burning fossil fuels, we're doing other activities that result in gases being uh, released into the atmosphere, the ozone layer is thickening, which means that the heat doesn't escape as easily, which results in the slow but steady increase in the global temperature. So let's go back to this number, 2 degrees Celsius. Where does this come from? So this number actually comes from the 2017 uh, global 2017 Paris Climate Accords, where 193 countries, including the European Union, signed the Paris uh, Agreement, which essentially stated that all these countries have to do everything in their power to keep the global temperature from rising two degrees Celsius above the normal average. Uh, so uh, these study, this number comes from a number of studies from all over the globe. Um, so the most prominent of which probably come from space agencies like NASA and the European Space Agency. And what these studies have shown us is that uh, if we pass this threshold of two degrees Celsius, we are going to see disastrous, catastrophic effects to the way the environment and the climate functions. The most notable of which is probably going to be the more frequent, more unpredictable, and more intense uh, natural disasters such as hurricanes, floods, droughts, and heat waves. So these have the potential to cost us billions, if not trillions of dollars in damages, and also uh, the potential to take billions of lives, both directly through the, through the disaster itself and indirectly through things that these disasters cause, such as poverty, crop failure, famine. Uh, so all of these things will result in billions of deaths. So we've already been seeing some of the effects that climate change has on our environment. At 1.2 degrees Celsius, we are way below the threshold. We're already seeing the effects. Let's go back to 2017. I'm sure you all remember the three hurricanes that came by that year. Hurricanes, uh, hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria. So these costed the U.S. billions of dollars, thousands of lives were lost, and they were the worst hurricanes ever recorded in human history. Now, a large reason why it was so bad is because of human activity. It was directly linked to climate change. There are so many other examples as well. Let's look back at 2021. Uh, remember in Texas when they had that massive snowstorm that caused the power crisis? I'm sure you all remember that. Uh, that was also directly linked to global warming and climate change. The floods in China, 
linked to human activity. How about the wildfires? The more frequent wildfires that are happening all over the world in places like Australia, BC, and Northern Ontario, again, linked to human activity and climate change. So we are literally doing this to ourselves. We are costing ourselves billions of dollars and thousands of lives just because we are so incredibly blind to this problem and we don't pay attention to it and we don't realize how severe it is and how little time we have. So we could talk about the problems, we could talk about the effects of climate change uh, on the environment all day long. So let's move on to a different standpoint. Let's talk about the economy and the government uh, because um, the Global warming has hit the economy just as hard as it has hit the environment. So, uh, in, uh, in 2012, sorry, uh, when Hurricane Sandy swept through the southern U.S., it costed them about $71 billion uh, in United States currency, uh, which is a massive amount in, a, in and of itself, right? Uh, so, in, uh, in 2017, sorry, just five years later, five years, Hurricane Harvey went through about the same area. It costed $125 billion in five years. And one of the biggest reasons why it was so much worse is because of climate change and human activity. Let's look at another example from the other side of the spectrum. Let's look at the Honduras. When it was hit by hurricanes Ida and Iota in 2020, it costed them about $2 billion in damage, give or take. Um, so that's it pales in comparison compared to the amount of money that the U.S. spent on their damages. But you've got to keep in mind that this is a relatively poor country. It was one fifteenth of their entire GDP, which means that if we were to get more frequent hurricanes, more intense hurricanes, and also more unpredictable hurricanes, we wouldn't be able to evacuate the citizens more. Uh, we wouldn't be able to evacuate the citizens as efficiently. And it also, it would cost them even more money which means that a lot of countries that are frequently hit by disasters like hurricanes are not going to be able to afford it. It's going to result in thousands, if not millions, of deaths due to, uh, due to poverty, due to famine, and through the disaster itself. So the problem of climate change is very unique in that there's such a strict time limit. So if we look at another problem that's very prominent in the US right now, let's look at the problem of healthcare. So the, in theory, the U.S. could implement uh, free healthcare at any time. They wouldn't face any negative consequences. They're not going to have to implement it before a certain time in order to uh, prevent like the apocalypse or prevent catastrophe. Global warming, on the other hand, has a very, very strict time limit. As time goes on, this problem is going to get harder and harder to solve. Once we get past the tipping point, we will not be able to reverse it. Uh, and that means we'll just basically all die. Um, so we have got until 2030 to reduce our carbon emissions by 45%. We've got until 2050 to go completely carbon neutral. So we can't even leave this problem um, to the next generation because we have seven years. This isn't about your grandchildren's lives. This isn't about your children. This is about your life. This is going to happen in your lifetime. So we have got to do something about it now. Um, so what can we do about it? Allow me to walk you through my three-step process on how you as an individual can do your part in combating climate change. Let's get started. So uh, I'm using an acronym, RAD, because saving the environment is totally radical. So uh, RAD stands for first, R, reduce, A, advocate, and D, demand. So first, reduce. This is about reducing your own footprint. So right now in the status quo, we've all got a lot of habits that we, we like to use on like a day-to-day -day basis. Um, these might be very, very good for your life. They might make your life worth living, but they might be very bad for the environment. Uh, some examples could be like taking long, hot showers, eating meat every single day, or uh, eating meat every single day, uh, leaving the lights on, leaving the taps on, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it all before, but uh, all of these things, we've got to change it because we don't have much time left. Uh, sure, it might cause you to feel sad now, like, oh, I won't be able to have steak for dinner. Uh, but just think, in 30 years, we'll be able to live on a planet that isn't literally on fire, and I think that's a pretty good thing. Um, so, yeah, just keep that mindset in mind. So now, moving on to the second step, advocate. So we can only achieve climate change, uh, we can only achieve our goals of staying below two degrees Celsius if we, want, uh, if we have collective action and governmental action. 
So uh, advocate deals with the uh, collaborative action. So tell your friends, tell your family, sign petitions, attend rallies, make the problem clear. Get the word out there uh, because people don't understand how severe of a problem climate change really is. They don't understand how little time we have. So it's up to us to educate, that on that, uh, educate them on that and make it incredibly clear that we need to do something now. So um, now moving on to the third and final step, demand. So we as individuals, or even as a collective, we're not the most powerful people in society, right? I think we can all agree on that. And I think arguably the most, uh, most powerful people are probably the government. So we've got to get governmental change if we want tangible and fast action to climate change. We've got to get them to uh, enact policies. We've got to get them to spend money on initiatives. So how can we do this? It may sound complicated, but it's really more simple than you, could, you would think. So let's look at an example. In 2004, I'm pretty sure, Obama, when he was first running for a seat in the US government, he was opposed to gay marriage. Uh, so as, time went th as times went on, as people began to realize that, oh, there's nothing inherently wrong with loving someone of the same gender, uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with marrying them, uh, and people began to say that, hey, we're not going to vote for you if you don't change your opinion. So in 2012, I'm pretty sure, Obama became the first American president to publicly support uh, gay marriage because of the way that people presented the issue and because people made it clear that this issue was huge, it's very pressing, and they need change. I believe we can achieve the exact same thing with climate change. As long as we make the issue clear, as long as we make it very, very clear that we need change and we need it now, the government is going to take action. So we've got to make it incredibly clear. So to recap, the three steps are R, reduce, A, advocate, and D, demand, because saving the environment is? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, now that I've given you some of the effects of climate change, as well as some of the things that you can do to fight it, it's up to you to do with that information what you will. Now keep in mind that you don't have to do every single thing I've told you today in order to prevent catastrophe. I'm pretty sure if the majority of us just implemented the first step about reducing your own footprint and fixing your own habits, we will be able to avoid disaster by quite a wide margin. So it's up to us to do our part. So just keep that in mind. So another thing to keep in mind is we don't have much time left. The fate of the world rests on our shoulders, and we have got to do something sometime, so we've got to do it now. Take the initiative. Thank you.